So, not too long ago, I received the media kit from, of course, the OnePlus 10T, the latest device from OnePlus. And I find it quite an interesting device, although there are, of course, good and bad things. And that's the topic of today's video. What are the good things about the OnePlus 10T and what are not so good things about the OnePlus 10T? Now, some you will see coming, but some others might actually be surprising for you. So, let's straight away start with one of the main things that I find really good about the OnePlus 10T. It's its fast charging. 150 watt charging, that's mental. That 4800 mAh battery that is inside the OnePlus 10T is actually split into segments. One of 2400 and one of 2400, allowing both sides to be charged at of course that 75 watt combining in that 150 watt charging. It's mental, so we're gonna do a little test. So right now it's at 38% and we're gonna charge it and see what it comes out at at the end of this video. So let's just put it in and see where it gets. And then we continue our conversation about the OnePlus 10T and which are some good features on the OnePlus 10T. Now, no surprise, one of the things is also the SOC. This is the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. Again, it sounds like a math equation when it comes to just your phone. I find it a weird name, but there we go. That's the name of the chip itself. And of course, the OnePlus 10T. Not only do I notice quite a substantial difference in terms of thermals, but also in terms of throttling. Now, those thermals can also be down to, of course, a more effective cooling in the OnePlus 10T. They put a lot more cooling in it, and therefore, it should allow the heat to dissipate far faster compared to some other phones. With that being said, though, I still think it's a combination of, of course, the new Snapdragon and, of course, the heat management inside the phone as well. But so far, I actually find that one of the most impressive features about the OnePlus 10T as well. So, in terms of CPU, definitely a good phone when it comes down to that. Then, of course, we have to talk about the display itself. It's a 6.7 inch display and, of course, it's an AMOLED display with 120 Hz. For the phone itself, I think it's actually quite an excellent display. It's not going to be the best on the market, but you're not paying for that price. It's also a flat display, so if you don't like curved displays, yeah, definitely, that's one of those selling points as well for the OnePlus 10T. It is, of course, a bit of a larger phone, but with that being said, I still think that 6.7 inch is pretty normal these days when it comes to other phones as well. And then the next one. This is actually quite an important one, especially for people who don't live here, basically. So TK Bay tested actually the antenna array for, of course, the OnePlus 10T. And he noticed a huge improvement in terms of speeds of downloading and uploading compared to some other phones that he's tested before. Getting 1,500 out of my head from his result, which is much better than, well, the other phone that he tested it with. Check his video out in the link in the description where you can clearly see it as well. So link in the description where you can check that out. But either way, when it comes to the antenna array being inside, of course, the OnePlus 10T, it's definitely better. They call it like a 360 system, mainly because it also has it in the middle of the frame itself. This allows for a better antenna array and therefore allows for better speech of downloading and so on. Of course, your antenna bands need to be supported. And from what I heard, the OnePlus 10T actually supports more bands as well in America compared to, for instance, the OnePlus 10 Pro. For myself, when it comes to that test, I noticed that I got about 30 more in terms of download and in terms of upload, about 15. It's not a lot, but if you look at the percentage wise, it's actually quite a substantial gain compared to the 120 ish, 130 max that I get on normal other phones with 5G support as well. So there is an improvement. But for me, it is far less noticeable. Now, this last one is the design itself. Now, I will have to say that the design of the OnePlus 10 Pro actually kind of like, especially because of the color itself. But what they did with the OnePlus 10T is integrate the camera far better compared to, for instance, the OnePlus 10 Pro. The system just is smoother and it has just a smooth transition from the back to the camera itself. I think overall, in terms of design, it definitely is more appealing because of that. That being said though, I would have loved to see that color that we have, of course, on the OnePlus 10 Pro. Or, you know, having the black one. But I got the green one, so there we go. But when it comes to the design itself, I think it's actually quite appealing. Not the best looking device out there. But I think in terms of design, it's definitely an upgrade compared to the OnePlus 10 Pro. When it comes to how they actually allow this smoothness to continue towards the camera itself. It reminds me of the OnePlus Nord CE2 5G. Now, there are some things word noting that aren't so great about the OnePlus 10T. I like the device so far, but I have to, of course, test it more for a full review. But there are some things that are definitely a miss. One, 
is of course not having USB 3.1, it's USB 2.0, which makes it that you don't have HDMI out support, which the OnePlus 10 Pro does have. I feel like they should have kept, of course, the USB 3.1 instead of switching to USB 2.0. It makes no sense to me, especially for the price. I think they should have kept that and should have used that. Now, when it comes to some other things, it's clear that the alert slider is not something that I only miss, but a lot of people. The alert slider being a miss on the OnePlus 10T makes no sense to me. I feel like, yes, the space might be less inside the phone itself, but then you should have made some space. That's something that I find really weird about the OnePlus 10T, and that's definitely something that makes OnePlus different compared to some other devices. So I find it odd that they chose to remove that one feature that really makes them stand out in a certain way. Now, of course, we know the next two that are coming are basically something that I keep bringing back for every single phone. It's no headphone jack. A headphone jack is by the audio performance allows for a deck inside as well if you do it properly and of course just having no battery for of course your music not to mention that i use audio in my car and it doesn't have bluetooth i use the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack i then need a 3.5 to of course usb-c and not every single one works on every single phone so that's not very nice at all so having that not in the phone is really a miss for me when it comes to the oneplus 10t but honestly i'm not surprised that we don't have this as well then of course we also don't have micro sd support this means that of course you cannot extend your memory from the factory itself so if you are for instance saying i want the 128 gigabyte version and it's full you really can't do anything else apart from of course putting it on your pc or somewhere else where you can manage the data itself therefore i feel like yeah micro sd is definitely needed on a phone it just makes sense especially with files getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So having micro SD definitely is worth it on a phone. And lastly, honestly, also the camera setup itself. Having a two megapixel sensor as a macro doesn't make any sense for a phone about this price. And of course, also having an eight megapixel resolution ultra wide is also somewhat of a downsize. I feel like they could have easily provided us with a higher resolution for at least the ultra wide. I feel like that's more important than having three cameras on one phone where one of them is a two megapixel resolution. Either way, those were my top features and of course misses of the OnePlus 10T. Now, at the beginning, I said, let's charge the phone itself. It was at 38%. Now let's find out after this short video, how much it is at now. It's at 68%. That's really fast. 69, sorry. 69% I'm actually not joking it's actually 69% so it's 69% in this short amount of time this allows me for instance to take a shower in the morning for instance and I need to go to work which is well I just work here so I walk downstairs to there and it doesn't matter if you are someone that needs to go to there or his job then it's simple just put your phone in the charger for a little bit and it's perfectly fine so that's definitely one of the best selling points actually while we're talking it's now at 71 so yeah, definitely 72, sorry. See what I mean with fast charging? It's really rapid. Now, <laughs> that was the video. I'm actually surprised about how fast that is. Now, anyway, that was the video itself. Let me know what you think about the OnePlus 10T, which is now at 70, which is now at 73%. And of course, let me know what you want to know about the OnePlus 10T as well. And of course, um, if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to subscribe, hit like, comment below, and of course, you know, hit the bell icon. Either way, have a good one and talk to you guys in the next.